Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to be sure they get notifications as soon as these videos land your way. Now, it is a new year, it's a new you, it's 2020, and this year it is all about the meat-free options. It's something I've been thinking about, it's something that a lot of people have been requesting, so I wanna bring you five brilliant recipes that are meat-free that are gonna make life a little bit easier getting veggies into your diet this year. Oh, and before I let you go, I wanna let you know that there's a brand new season of Click Plate coming your way with recipes that you guys voted for on our community page here on YouTube. So we have five really great recipes that are the most searched for recipes across the internet, some of the most popular ones that you guys voted for, so I hope you enjoy that series. Uh, but without further ado, here are those top five meat-free recipes. Enjoy! Today we are talking about smoothies. Now, I am not a breakfast person per se. I do like getting into routines, but generally speaking, my go-to breakfast when I'm on the go is a breakfast smoothie. So today I wanna to share four brilliant personal trainer approved breakfast smoothies that not only look great, but also taste great too. And each one has a unique boost depending on what kind of day you're planning to have. Now, my buddy and personal trainer, Jonathan, has been staying with us in LA. So he has been kicking my ass, bringing me to Barry's boot camp classes and uh, also on runs, but it is all in the name of health and fitness. So let's introduce you to him. Ah, there he is. Hi there. Did that work? <laughs> Jonathan is from Sweden and we were in a boy band together in our very young youth. We were, you At were least you, one of us. Well, you were, I was 18 and you were 14. Anyway, he, strangely, there was a 14 year old in our boy band. He was clearly that talented. So we're gonna make four really brilliant breakfast smoothies. Why are these brilliant? Why are they fantastic? What are the four? How do you make them? Over to you. So one of the main things I keep hearing from people who try out breakfast smoothies are that they don't stay full for long enough. Mm -hmm. And usually it's because they miss out on either carbs, fat, or protein. Okay. So in these four smoothies, we've gotten all of those nutrients in there, but in different ways. So for our chocolate kickstart smoothie, I want you to start with adding the banana, then add in a handful of cocoa nibs, a spoonful of peanut butter, and your choice of protein powder. Now that can be plant sourced, it can be whey protein, it can be whatever kind of protein you prefer. Finish off by adding some almond milk and some brewed espresso. Now blitz it up and then serve it with some more cocoa nibs on top. Right, he doesn't need any more food so he's got the smaller glass but I've got this one. Let's give it a taste. Mmm. It's good, eh? Chocolatey. Very chocolatey. I really, because I think, you no, know, if you haven't used cacao nibs before, you forget that bitterness, and mm -hmm. then it's that lovely sort of sweetness that kind of evolves as you bite into it. But look at that, look how frothy it looks. I, let, me, let me get a close up of that. It's frothy, it's beautiful, it's all the things you're gonna want. I actually don't need too many sweet things in the morning, and I, I'm more drawn towards like savory stuff mm -hmm. for breakfast, but that as a smoothie is like total indulgence. It feels like you're getting something um, naughty, but it's nice. Okay, on to our next smoothie, what is this one? So for our liquid sunshine smoothie, we start off by adding the banana and the mango. We then go for some turmeric, your choice of protein powder, some coconut oil, and freshly ground cardamom. I like that this is spiced. I love cardamom and I think it works really well in a mango lassi. But that's not all the ingredients, right? No, so we've still got to add some coconut milk. And I chose coconut milk in this one because it has that nice little sweetness, sweetness. to it. Sweetness, it has a nice bit of sweetness, I love that. Um, the coconut oil in here. Yes. People have opinions on coconut oil, uh, but I still use it for my cooking, specifically for the flavor. But is it still in the good books? Can we still eat coconut oil? It's certainly still in the good books if you're looking for like a, this good energy source that will keep you going uh, through the day. Okay. Uh, but it's certainly something you don't want to like indulge in too, too much. much. Okay. I sometimes do sit by the television eating spoonfuls of <laughs> coconut oil, but I'm going to have to stop that now. So that's all the ingredients. What next? It's good to go, so let's blitz it, then serve it and put a straw in it, and then you are done. Right, let's taste it. Okay, you've got your smoothie, I've yep. got mine. This is what we're looking at here. Uh, cheers. Cheers. Is this gonna be good? Mm hmm So the thing Woo! is, we have to confess something. Um, we, we may have added a little bit more turmeric than that was necessary, yes. but that is a really tasty lassie, or smoothie. And also that's what makes it look this good on camera. That is really nice, and what I love about it is that hint of cardamom. If you don't use cardamom, it's just one of those brilliant spices that just yeah. brings flavor, and especially with this, it feels like something more exotic, so it, it's really nice. It's like LA weather in a glass. LA weather in a glass, except that it's raining outside. But yes, cheers, I'm, I'm glad you came on the week that it rained, cheers.
The next smoothie is a good one, and this one I'm very excited about, so take it away. For our super green smoothie, we start off adding in some spinach. After that, add the mango and a little avocado. Add in some hemp protein and some moringa powder, and then finish it off with your choice of milk. Very, very nice. Now, this moringa powder. Yes. Can you swap that out with anything? Is there any specific reason we're using moringa? So moringa is a really good source of iron. So you know the, this hype about kale? Yes. Yes, moringa is like kale on fire. Before you start this, I have lived with this man in a house. If you get him started on a specific topic like this, prepare yourselves. <laughs> You just go for it and I'll sit back until this is finished. So tell me about kale there, Jonathan. We don't have to talk too much about kale. Give me the shortened version. <laughs> Moringa is the better version of kale, like the better big brother, like oh, me to good. you. Uh, well, that's and not how that works, but okay, I didn't know that, okay. Everyone goes crazy about kale and actually the sort of iron you would get from the amount of kale normal people eat yeah. isn't necessarily enough. No, exactly. So that's where something like a Moringa powder can come in it can come in handy because then you dry up the kale, you don't need to put a kilo of kale in there. Uh, so it's basically a more concentrated version of a better green. Okay, interesting. So that's why we're adding it in here. So uh, our smoothie has all its ingredients together. Now we need to blitz it up, right? Yep, so blitz it up and serve it with a little more moringa powder sprinkled on top. I have moringa powder in my house and sometimes I think it tastes a little bit like dried paper. So I don't think I'll be sprinkling it on mine, but you're more than welcome to have it on yours. <laughs> <laughs> so this time I'm gonna give you the lovely sprinkled oh, lovely. one. Right, cheers. Nice. Cheers. Mm -hmm. It's good. Nice. I actually, to be honest, I like green smoothies. Me too. And I feel like, I think, like I said, I like savory stuff. So I, I often find like, where people find kale or spinach or anything mm -hmm. like that, a little bitter. I find that really nice and that's quite like refreshing. And I also feel when you're eating something smoothie or drinking a smoothie that is green, I always just feel a little bit more smug and virtuous. Very true. So that's always a good thing. So No, that's gorgeous. That really is lovely. Um, and I'd say if you're going for a vegan protein powder, this might be the one where that kind of works best. Okay. Uh, I'd say in the sweeter smoothies that kind of tastes weird, but then if you're going for the more savory ones, like the, the avocado and the vegan protein works really good together. Now for the perfect purple smoothie, you start by adding in the blueberries. Next, add in some purple kale, then some almond butter, a side powder, some protein powder, and your choice of milk. Now I do have a question because acai balls are everywhere in Los Angeles, basically the city was built on them, but I don't know much about acai as an ingredient. I know it's kind of like, am I right in thinking it's like a goji berry and it's like superfood properties, but pretty what, what is it? It's very rich in antioxidants. Okay. And that's pretty much where the, the hype come from. Okay. Um, and I just think it tastes real nice, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah. Berries in general are really good because of their nutrients, um, but the taste is amazing. So. Okay. I do love, like in fairness, I, it's, it makes a lovely color, but it also is a good flavor as well. So, um, and you can always kind of tell yourself whenever you're having a side that you know it's gonna do something good inside of your body. I like to think that. And then to serve it, top it off with a little acai powder after blitzing. Right, so uh, I have my, that, is that your one or is that my, hang on, where's the other one gone? Oh, it's in here. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so you can, I feel like that's a you-sized cup and this is a me-sized cup, so uh, cheers to oh, the last cheers to one. Cheers to you if you've got through to this far in the video. Mmm. Mmm. It's good. That one I like. Yeah. I think that's my second favorite. I, I like the green one and this one as much. It, there's a lovely sweetness to it, but it's still kind of like mellowed out. Mm -hmm. That's really, really nice. So in this one, we use coconut milk and um, that works really well. I actually think wise. that's what it is. Yeah. I really like the sweetness of the coconut milk. Uh -huh. nice. And we are using the unsweetened coconut milk, so make sure that whenever you're getting almond milk or, or coconut milk or rice milk or whatever you want, don't get the sweetened ones. Okay. That will add on a good few calories and it will shoot your, your blood sugar up. Okay, maybe that's what's been wrong with me all these times. Now everyone has heard of a fruit smoothie, but have you heard of a frozen fruit smoothie bowl, which is basically kind of like dessert, but it's for breakfast. It is so delicious. You get lovely orbs of wonderful smoothie topped with a crispy, crunchy granola, fresh fruit, and I even have some edible flowers. It's gonna look gorgeous. So first things first, we're gonna make up our smoothie. I've got some frozen berries. I've got any combination of berries will work in here. Just nice little, fr oh, they're all over the counter. <laughs> So get them in there as well. Um, try not to get them all over your counter space. Uh, I don't know how that was gonna work. 
But once you have all your berries in there, the other key ingredient I think really makes the difference to a good smoothie is some frozen banana. You can add fresh banana by all means, but the texture you'll get from frozen banana will make all the difference. So that's in there. We've got a little bit of apple juice just to bring it together. If you don't want to add too much sweetness, you could add some water in here as well. It's totally up to you. Get your lid on your blender and then blitz it up. Okay, we're in business. Nice, smooth fruit smoothie mixture. And now all I've got to do is transfer this out into a freezer proof container just like this one. Tumble that out into your container and look how luscious and velvety it looks. It really is a gorgeous smoothie mixture. And the last thing I'm going to add, just for a little bit of crunch and a little bit of texture, is some chia seeds. So just grab about a tablespoon of chia seeds. Just sprinkle them over the top and then a little bit extra. Just stir it through. Once that's nicely mixed through, this needs to go into the freezer and it's gonna freeze off for about two hours or overnight if you have the time. And when it comes out of the freezer, you get left with this wonderful, almost sorbet texture. So, off to the freezer. While that's freezing away, we are going to make a granola to sprinkle over the top. Now, this granola recipe is one that you can make in advance. You can store it in a jar and it keeps for months. So it's a great one to learn. So into a bowl, I've got some porridge oats. I've got some almonds. I have some pumpkin seeds. I have some sunflower seeds. It's really handy to remember all these. And some hazelnuts. Now, to bring all this together, we have a combination of coconut oil, which I've just melted down in a pan. And the coconut oil is going to give you this lovely flavour in granola and we're also going to add some sweetness from some maple syrup. So about two tablespoons going in here. This will coat all those dry ingredients and when it toasts off in the oven you're going to be left with great flavour. Grab up a spoon, give it all a good mix through. I actually think when you have the sweetness of the maple syrup what works really well is a tiny pinch of sea salt. It just gives you that balance between sweet and savoury. Once this is mixed through, tumble it out into a baking tin lined with some parchment paper, just like this one. And we're gonna spread it out evenly so we get a nice even roast on this. And you do want a bit of color on these bits of granola because it does add a bit of flavor as well. I'm trying to get every last bit. I do like to take every last bit from the bottom of the bowl and when I don't get the opportunity to do that, it drives me mad. So you're just gonna have to bear with me. Okay, I think I've nearly got everything. Just give me some scraping time. Okay, and we're done, fine, brilliant. As much as I could do. Spread it all out. This now goes into the oven. It's gonna go in and bake off at 180 degrees. That's 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's gonna cook for about 15 minutes. So, let's get in the oven. Right, I've got my frozen fruit smoothie. I've got my granola set, so now it's time to serve it up. I have a ice cream scoop with some hot water, and now it's just time to get a nice orb of this lovely smoothie into my bowl. Look at that, a beautiful orb of smoothie. And I'm gonna go two or three more and then finish it off with our granola. Okay, beautiful little scoops of smoothie. And now it's time to top this with some of that wonderful sweet granola just in and around. Like this is a really great breakfast dish. It kind of feels like you're eating dessert because it, kind of feels like you're eating ice cream, but it's really delicious. And with that granola, you're getting all sorts of good stuff going on. To finish it off, all you need to do is grab up some berries and just decorate them in and around. This is a beautiful little brunch dish. It's perfect for serving with friends. You can make it all in advance and then just assemble it whenever you want. I'm gonna finish it off with some beautiful little edible flowers in and around these smoothie orbs, and it's gonna look absolutely gorgeous. How gorgeous does that look? Those little touches of the edible flowers. I know they're over the top, but they look so pretty in this plate. I'm gonna try some of this wonderful smoothie mixture in with that granola and get some of it up. Mm. It's cold, it's icy, but you get this lovely smooth finish on it. It's fruity, and then you get that sort of nutty taste from the baked oats. With berries, this is an absolutely brilliant breakfast. You could add a dollop of yogurt in there, a drizzle of honey if you want some more sweetness. 
Who doesn't love a good burger? But how many of you have tried a healthy burger? I'm gonna show you how to make a delicious beetroot burger, which is full of great things, lots of healthy ingredients, and is super simple to make. And it starts off in a pan with a little drop of oil. I've got some rapeseed oil going in here, and we're gonna fry off some onions and a little bit of garlic. So straight in there with some red onion. Give that a quick stir around the pan. To this, I'm gonna add a touch of garlic. The core ingredients to these beetroot burgers is of course beetroot, but I also have a selection of veggies. And this is a great one because you can sneak in so many good vegetables into this fantastic burger mix. I've got courgettes, which I've grated up just on a box grater. I've got beetroots and I've also got some carrots. So get them straight into the pan. This is a great combination of vegetables. Lots of good things going on here. Just let these fry out for about five to 10 minutes, just until they reduce down and all the moisture comes out. So, while they're reducing away, I'm gonna mix up a combination of chickpeas, porridge oats, and tahini in a processor like this. Porridge oats are gonna give us that long, sustained energy. Some tahini paste. This is a sesame seed paste, and it has a sweet, nutty flavor. And then finally, to bring this all together, I've got one egg going in here. So, crack a large free-range egg straight into this mixture. Get the mixer top on, and we're gonna go blitzing. Okay, we have a nice smooth mixture, porridge oats, chickpeas, and all those wonderful things. And scrape all of this into a big mixing bowl. This looks pretty good. Now, the one very important job you need to do is to squeeze out the liquid from all your vegetables. So take this off the heat and look at that. You can see the carrots, you can see the courgettes. They've all taken on that beautiful scarlet beetroot color and that makes all the difference in your beautiful burger. So transfer this into a colander. So I'm just gonna squeeze out any of the excess moisture here so I don't have any leftover water. Okay, we've got all the excess moisture out, so I'm gonna get rid of this, stick this mixture straight into our chickpea porridge and tahini mix, and now it's just a case of mixing this until it's nicely combined. This is looking pretty good, so now for some final touches, I'm gonna add in a pinch of sea salt and some black pepper, but I also wanna get in there with some herb action. I've got some coriander, which I have over here. I'm just gonna take a nice handful of beautiful coriander, give it very fine chop here, and then get that straight in there, alongside some spring onion. I love the fact that you've got fresh coriander, you've got that lovely crunch of spring onions, and now it's just a case of mixing it all up. What I do love about these burgers is that even though they are completely meat free, they still look quite hearty and meaty and the color in here is what it's all about. So this is now ready to be formed into burger patties. So I'm just gonna scoop up what I would describe as not a beach ball, not a ping pong ball, but a tennis ball sized piece of burger mixture. And you wanna just shape it into like a flat tennis ball sized piece of burger, just like this one. That looks pretty good. Six delicious beetroot burgers ready to be fried. Now, if you have the time, stick them in the fridge and let them firm up, but they can be fried straight away as well. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Pan straight on the heat, get a little bit of oil in there, and now we're gonna fry these off once this comes up to temperature. My beautiful beetroot burgers are just about ready to serve. To serve them up, I have some whole wheat buns, I have some avocado, and I have some hummus, and a little bit of crunch from some red cabbage. So I'm gonna just prepare up my avocado and slice up my buns, and then it's time to serve. We've got our bread, we've got our avocado, and now I'm gonna smear this with some lovely hummus. You can use whatever you fancy, but I think hummus works really well. So forget your ketchup, we're going hummus. So on top of the hummus, we've got to go burger. So turn off your heat. These lovely burgers are now ready to serve and look at that. I mean, you would never know there's no meat in here. It's beautiful, it's thick, it's voluptuous, and it's bursting with flavor. So straight on top of the hummus, on top of the burger, I'm going in with a little bit of crunch from some red cabbage. Also, you get great color in there with the red cabbage. Speaking of color, we're going in there with a few slices of avocado. I'm gonna to top it off with some sprouts. 
and you can get these in any supermarket. They are a great injection of fresh, healthy flavor. So get them straight on top, stick on the lid, and try and keep everything together. I've lost a piece of avocado, but look at that. The healthiest burger you will ever come across. And now all that's left to do is get it into my mouth. So bear with me, my friends. Mm. That right there is one of the healthiest burgers you will ever come across, but it is so tasty. There's so much going on in there. You've got lovely texture, you've got sweet flavor, you've got that sort of meatiness that you wouldn't even expect from a healthy burger. It's so delicious. Now today's recipe is a gorgeous veggie fritter fried until golden brown and served up with some soft boiled eggs, some avocado and a little drizzle over the top. This is a spectacular breakfast that is not only easy to make but looks spectacular too. So we're going to boil up the eggs. This is super easy and it's a foolproof method for getting beautiful set egg whites but really gooey and runny egg yolks. So bring a small pot of water to the boil and leave the eggs in the pot for seven minutes. Once the time is up you're going to carefully transfer the eggs over to a bowl of ice water, set them aside to cool and then peel the shell off. Next up, it is the veggie fritters. Now, these veggie fritters I make for Noah all the time, my little one-year-old son. He absolutely loves them, and they're a great way of using up whatever veggies you have in the fridge. You can use courgette, you can use carrot, you can use butternut squash, you can use whatever veggies you might have hanging around that you wanna use up. So I'm gonna add two cups of grated veggies. You could use squash, courgette, sweet potato, or carrot into a large bowl, and then you're gonna follow that up with some chia seeds, a little chickpea flour, some harissa spice blend, and then a splash of milk. Mix that all together until it's evenly combined. And I'll be honest, when I make this, I don't use a recipe at all. I literally grate whatever veggies I have and I start adding in the other ingredients just until I get it to a nice dropping consistency and they can be fried off. So it is more of a recipe that you can eyeball it even if you don't have the full recipe. Right, it's time to get these fried up. So you're gonna add some oil to a large frying pan on a medium high heat. Now the trick to these veggie fritters is to take a heaped tablespoon, pop it onto the hot pan, and then use the back of the spoon just to get a nice little divot. It will result in evenly cooked fritters and that's exactly what you want. You're gonna repeat this method with the rest of the batter and fry them off for four minutes on each side until they're golden brown. Repeat this in batches until you've used up all the batter and then remove them from the pan and keep them warm. Now next up is some grilled broccoli. This little method is a really good one to learn. I use it for asparagus when it's in season and all you're gonna do is oil up your broccoli or tender stem broccoli, whatever you have your hands on. You're gonna drizzle that over, add a good pinch of sea salt and black pepper and stick it under a high grill. You're gonna grill them for about two to three minutes either side just until they're nice and tender. They should still have a bit of bite, but they should have gone gorgeously charred and give you loads of great flavor. We've got the broccoli done, we've got the fritters done, we've got the eggs done. Now we need to talk about this yogurt. Add some Greek yogurt to a bowl and add in a little bit of turmeric. Next, mince a garlic clove and stick it straight in. Lastly, we're gonna squeeze the juice of half a lemon and then whisk it all together, season it to taste, and then set it aside. And that's it. We have all the key components to this dish, so it's time to serve. First, you wanna place the fritter on the plate and add the broccoli next to them. Next, add two boiled eggs we prepared earlier, along with half an avocado, and cut the eggs in half to let that yolk flow. Drizzle the yogurt over the top. Add a sprinkle of Aleppo pepper just to finish it off, and then add a little drizzle of olive oil just to taste. Look at that, that is a gorgeous breakfast, full of color, full of flavor, and it only takes about 15 minutes to make. Hi guys, I am gonna show you how to make a ridiculously good roast tomato and roast garlic soup. It is ideal for summer, particularly when you can get your hands on some really good quality tomatoes. Now, even if you don't have some good quality tomatoes, you can still make this soup, and the process I'm about to do is going to create the most beautiful, sweet, and caramelized tomatoes. I'm also gonna roast off, alongside the tomatoes, some garlic. Now, I've got two whole heads of garlic going in here, which does sound like quite a lot, but believe me, once you roast off the garlic, it takes away that astringent garlic flavor, and instead, it kind of makes it intensely sweet and really rich. Tomatoes go in, roast garlic goes in, and then I need to drizzle it with some olive oil, some balsamic vinegar, salt and pepper, and we're good to go.
you may have noticed I'm using the whole head of garlic. I've just taken off the tops of these to expose the cloves so that they get some of that flavor into them. And alongside this, I'm gonna add a few little sprigs of thyme just in here to give a little touch of flavor. I have the oven set to about 200 degrees Celsius. That's about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. They're gonna roast off for about 35 minutes to 40 minutes, but the way that you know that they're done is those tomatoes will have reduced down, become intensely sweet, and the garlic should be nice and mushy. It's a technical term. So once these have come out of the oven, we have beautiful, tender tomatoes and perfectly cooked mushy garlic. Now, these are gonna sit aside, and like I said, if you had cooked these off, right now you can just pop them into a jar and stick over a whole load of olive oil and it is absolutely gorgeous. You can keep them in the fridge for a few weeks, so they're handy to have. Now, we're gonna crack on with the rest of this soup. So, a little glug of olive oil going into our pan to start off this soup. We're going to add to that some onions straight into the pan and we're gonna soften them down alongside some carrots and some celery. That combination of the sweetness of the carrots, the sweetness of the onions, and that little bit of kind of bitter bite you get from celery. I'm just gonna soften these down for about six to eight minutes just until they're nice, sweet, and tender. So these are reducing down quite nicely at this point. I'm gonna season them up with some sea salt and a good pinch of black pepper. And I also wanna add in a little bit of herbage. And one herb that works extremely well with tomatoes and garlic is some thyme leaves. So I just have picked them here. And once they hit that hot temperature in the pan, they're just gonna become really aromatic. This is the base for any good soup. Start off with these flavors and you're in a good place. Now, while they're cooking away, I'm gonna grab up the garlic and using a little fork, I'm gonna just mush out all those little cloves. So by squeezing these out, you are left with this, this, essentially it's a garlic mush, but it's not raw garlic flavor you're getting. You're getting that sort of sweet intensity, but not the astringency that you would get with raw garlic. Okay, I've got the majority of my garlic out at this point. So I'm gonna get rid of this, give the hands a quick wash, and then using the back of that fork, I'm just gonna press this together until I have a really nice smooth paste that can be dolloped into that soup. It looks like my onions and my carrots are looking pretty good now, so they have softened down completely. I'm just gonna bring the temperature back up ever so slightly and transfer in the tomatoes that have roasted off so beautifully. And you can see just how intensely sweet and juicy they look now. They're gonna add so much flavor. I'm gonna get my garlic in on top of this. We're gonna get our stock straight in here. And you can use any stock you like. If you're gonna to wanna to make it vegetarian, you wanna use a vegetable stock. Otherwise, chicken stock for a more intense flavor. But we have some vegetable stock going straight in here. This is now gonna come up to temperature. And remember, all those tomatoes and everything is cooked out at this point. So all you're looking for is for this to bubble and boil away and to intensify. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of tomato puree. This will give that intense tomato flavor that just echoes the sweetness and the caramelized flavor that you get from those roast tomatoes. Okay, so this tomato soup has been bubbling away for about 10 minutes just until all those flavors come together. I'm gonna turn off the heat, relax in the kitchen, and I have a stick blender, which I'm just gonna use to blitz this up until it's nice and smooth. So at this point, you can do any of the tweaking that's necessary. So give it a little taste. It's intensely tomatoey, but it does need a generous pinch of some salt just to get those flavors alive. I actually think it could do it with a pinch of pepper as well. Give that a good stir through, and I'm pretty sure that's good to go. So I'm gonna serve this up. So grab up a spoon or a ladle, and I'm just gonna transfer this across. I mean, it is silky, tomatoey and really, really comforting. You could actually serve it cold if you wanted to. I know that sounds a bit strange, but cold tomato soup, it's almost like a gazpacho, and this with the intense flavors would work really well. I'm gonna finish it off with a little sprig of thyme over the top, a little glug of olive oil just to finish this on the top, and a little sprinkle of just some black pepper, just to give it a little sense of what's in there. 
And that, my friends, is a soup to be proud of. If you like this recipe, hit that like button, leave us a comment in the box below, and of course, hit that subscribe button. We're slowly edging our way to 1 million subscribers, so make sure you help us and join in the journey to get recipes every single week. Until then, my friends, enjoy this soup, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Okay, this is looking pretty good. So, I'm gonna take away my little stick blender, which is, just hold the line please, collar. Uh -oh.